We were told that we should not eat out of our gardens. We should not allow our children in the backyard. We should not go in the basement. We should not get pregnant. So you would see this clustering of children who have extra fingers and extra toes. I'm still mad as hell. I mean, I really am. I am so angry that they continue to do this. The Center for Environmental Health and Justice is what it's called, and what we do is we essentially help grassroots groups across the country who are faced with environmental threats. It is not something I defined as a career. It was something that was defined for me. I was a shy, quiet housewife and would have been quite happy in that role for the rest of my life, but Love Canal defined a different path. I moved to Love Canal in uh, the fall of 1974. I totally had the American dream. Um, my husband was fully employed. I had a one-year-old son who was perfectly healthy. People called me deli domestic. Um, I stayed home all day. My biggest decision was what we were going to have for supper. Unfortunately, within a short period of time, Michael got sick. Michael developed um, epilepsy, grand mal seizures, a liver disorder, a urinary tract disorder. I knew there was something wrong in my family. I didn't know there was something wrong in the neighborhood until I read it in the newspaper. And then I was shocked. In 1940s, Hooker Chemical Corporation dammed off the canal from the Niagara River and then pumped the water out of the canal and put in raw chemicals, all different sorts of chemicals. And then it was covered up and later sold to the city of Niagara Falls and the Board of Education for one dollar, a bargain. There was a dump site with 20,000 tons of chemicals buried three blocks from my home and buried next to the school in which Michael was attending kindergarten. So I kept waiting for somebody who was really smart and somebody who knew what they were doing to come to my door and tell me what to do. While Michael was in the hospital, I looked at him and I realized that one of the reasons he's in that hospital is because I chose not to do anything. And it was after that that I decided I needed to go door to door and talk to people about whether they feel the same way I do, that the school is a danger. I needed to do something on my own to, um, to deal with this issue and protect my children. People would take me down in their basements and show me their sump pumps and show me the chemicals that had come up through the basement. The chemicals literally began to bubble to the surface. I mean, you could walk through that site back in the summer of 78 and there would be puddles of chemicals, black goop. We just found disease after disease and weird diseases. You know, a 12-year-old child who had a hysterectomy due to cancer, a 21-year-old man who died of crib death. Then once the neighborhood started to find out about it and then, you know, what was going on, she, you know, more or less gave out the word, then, you know, all heck broke loose. When you talk about the hysterical housewife, at that point, we qualified, hands down. We were screaming and crying. What happened to our children? Everybody knew my name because I had gone door to door. And because I had gone door to door, everybody also thought that I knew more than they did. She was suddenly tossed in the forefront of this movement. At that time, I mean, the immediate goal was evacuation, protect her family and, and the families of all the other residents in the area. I had no idea what I was doing. I was just shooting from the hip, as were my neighbors, and um, that was the hardest part. I mean, there was no road map. There was nothing to follow. City of Niagara Falls is owned and operated by the chemical industry, so if there was nobody to oppose it, they would have done the least amount possible that they could get away with. 
we've had enough of this. We are not taking any more. We are now really, really angry. In America, you grow up believing that government will help you. Government will solve your problems. And um, I realized then that it wasn't going to and that something else needed to happen. We did this health survey and we found that where there was clustering of diseases, miscarriages, stillborns, and there were like clusters of like birth defects and similar birth defects. And the health department looked at it, picked up the study, I mean literally, and threw it on the floor. But I know it was the state was, was terrible to try to work with. I mean, they just denied everything. You know, you'd show it to them and they'd still deny it. We were told that we should not eat out of our gardens. We should not allow our children in the backyard. We should not go in the basement. We should not get pregnant. And then they said that in addition to all of that, we had broken chromosomes. It was unbelievable. I mean, they, and that it was perfectly safe to live at Love Canal. And it was the chromosome study results that really put people over the edge. They just could not take any more. These people were all of a sudden wanting to burn things, turn over cars. I really saw them get vicious and it was getting scary. And when the EPA officials came to talk more about the chromosome damage, they just enclosed them in the house and said, you're not leaving till we're leaving. If it's so safe for us, then it ought to be safe for EPA too, don't you think? I mean, it was just like, oh my God, look where we are. I don't know what else we can do. I think this is gonna make or break it. So I call up the White House and said, I was just calling to talk to um, President Carter about the fact that we're holding two of his employees hostage here. I mean, this is a federal offense. I could go to prison for life. If we were not evacuated by Wednesday at noon, what we did, meaning holding these hostages, would look like a Sesame Street picnic to what we would do Wednesday at noon. And Wednesday at noon, precisely, the White House called and and read a press release, which I stood outside and word for word read it to the crowd that had gathered out front. And what they said is they would evacuate us all temporarily until permanent relocation funds could be um, appropriated. So it was a major victory. On October 1st, 1980, President Jimmy Carter came to the Civic Center in Niagara Falls and signed the um, appropriations to permanently relocate everybody. Uh, President Carter dealt with it when he, uh, when he was here in Niagara Falls to address the Love Canal problem. It was a problem that was like no other we had ever heard of in the nation before. Well, after Love Canal was, was winding down, we, we won our goals. We all were able to get relocated. I got lots of calls, and Harry um, wanted me to go back home and be Dolly Domestic again, be a full-time homemaker. And I just couldn't do that. So we parted. We parted friends, but we were forced to part. Other organizations were already calling, you know, um, teach us how to organize, what do we do? So I decided I was going to answer the calls from the people. We really are about helping grassroots people find their voices, speak out, and then bring those voices to the front. I think her legacy will be that, that uh that people can win, that people can beat government, that people can hold government accountable for the things they do. I consider it here for getting us out of there. I mean, I have no idea what would happen if we stayed there. Most of the ailments I've had have gone away. They've gone away for a while. Um, anything that may have affected me 
uh, far deeper, whether it be genetically or what have you. How that could affect me later on, I have no idea. But there's a good chance that that could reoccur, that could you know, affect me in other ways that I don't see. All we can do as activists and as leaders is to sort of make the spark. And I just feel really good about the fact that I can spark. You know, and I spark in Mississippi and I spark in Ontario and I can spark in Niagara Falls and um, get people motivated to think that they can make a difference, that they can change their destiny, um, and, you know, they can really create change.